Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Angela and I work for the town of Amherst. This is a meeting of the Jones Library Building Committee. This meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to the town of Amherst YouTube channel shortly. And at this time, I would like to turn things over to Professor Austin Serrett. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so is, I believe this meeting was noticed. Was this meeting noticed as a meeting of the building committee and the design subcommittee? So we will do what we have done in the past, which is we'll convene both committees and then move forward. So uh, I'm going to ask members of the building committee to signify their presence vocally. Sharon? Here. Christine? Here. Paul? Present. Sean? Here. Alex? Didn't hear you, Alex. Here. Thank you. Thanks so much. And Austin Sarrett is here. Okay, so the building committee is convened. Uh, Christine, do you want to convene the design subcommittee? I'll say that um, three of our four members are here, so we have a quorum and um, we're open. Great. Thank you so much. Okay, the first item of business uh, is the approval of minutes of the building committee. First, from February 2nd, 2023, is there a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Any corrections to those minutes? Okay. I'm going to ask you to signify a vote yes if you approve, no if you don't. Sharon? Yes. Christine? Yes. Paul? Yes. Am I on the building? This is building committee or the design? This is the building committee. Okay, yes. Thank Affirmative. you. Affirmative. Thank you. Sean? Yes. Um, Alex? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Thank you. Next, uh, the approval of the minutes of February 9th. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Second. Second. Fabulous. Okay, any corrections to those minutes? Okay. Uh, yes to approve, no not to approve. Sharon? Yes. Christine? Yes. Paul? Yes. Sean? Yes. Alex? Yes. And Austin votes yes. The agenda suggests that there are minutes from the design subcommittee. Christine, back to you. Okay, so we have minutes, uh, February 2nd. And I will call out um, first, are there any a motion to, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. That's trying okay. To a motion to approve. So moved. A second? A second, please. Thank you. Uh, are there any changes, suggestions? I see and hear nothing. So we'll take a vote for approval. Um, just as a note, they're the exact same as the committee <laughs> minutes. So uh, Sharon? Yes. <laughs> Austin? Yes. And myself, yes. So three of four since I. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Broke up so a little three bit. Three of four. Thank you. Okay. Thanks so much. I just wanted to make sure George wasn't here and he's still, he's not. So thanks. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the report from our distinguished town manager. <laughs> I have nothing new to report. Okay. Thank you. Sean. Financial update. Uh, I also have nothing to update other than we have a couple of meetings scheduled tomorrow um, to to go over some of the upcoming costs for the project. But uh, at the next meeting, we should have a lot more to update on that. That's fabulous. Thank you. Thank you so much. Craig, how nice to see you. Thank you, Austin. Likewise. Will, nice to see you too. Josephine, Ellen, welcome. Okay, Craig, to you. Thank you, Austin. Um, if I may, I'll share my screen. Goodbye, me. Fantastic, got it. Let me just click on the right box. So quickly, we'll run through schedule. Let's see if I can maximize this. There, okay. So um, our red line has moved over. We are uh, further, a little bit deeper into design development, approaching the halfway point of the design effort. Um, 
turning our view to the bottom of the screen. Uh, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but we are entering into the secure temporary library space um, block of time. Um, for upcoming meetings, this is now the graphic, uh, the design team's work plan, and then I messied it all up with all these red lines and marks, <sighs> but um, I think it's a good uh, visual. So here we are today. Um, the week started on the 13th. Uh, today we're at that red dot. Uh, Feingold Alexander is going to present to us the exterior color palette uh, for your consideration. Then uh, no meeting next week uh, as it is February vacation and will be a challenge for some. So we'll this committee will meet again uh, the week of the 27th. The actual date, I believe, is March 2nd. And at that meeting, we'll be looking for um, confirmation or approval of the exterior color palette, which you'll see tonight. And we'll also be seeing the updated design development landscape design. Then we've got uh, another week of no meeting. And then the week of March 13th, we'll meet again. And at that point, we'll be looking for confirmation or approval of that landscape design that you'll see in two weeks. So that's the upcoming. And then um, that same information is repeated here, just as a reminder. Uh, so here we are today on February 16th. Uh, the meeting for next week has been canceled or rather consolidated with the meeting on March 2nd. Beyond that, um, that will end or, or conclude the uh, cluster or batch of design intensive meetings that this committee and the and the um, design subcommittee have been wonderful about um, entertaining. Mm -hmm. And we'll move uh, more towards um, sort of monthly updates. Um, we will have um, just eclipsed the 50% DD uh, for our March 16th meeting. So we'll give you a little update then. Uh, then it'll, the next one will be April 13th. At that point, we'll have eclipsed the 75% design development. Uh, and then we'll have a little bit of a gap in meetings and we'll convene again, unless something comes up, but we'll convene again uh, at the very beginning of the summer to approve the final design development package, which will include not only <laughs> design documents, but also uh, a new cost estimate that is being re that will be reconciled between co two cost estimators per the usual um, procedure. <laughs> so a lot happening, uh, but uh, I'm very happy to report that the design development, the end of the schematic design and design development has been proceeding according to schedule. Uh, much thanks to the design team and this committee uh, and all of your uh, diligence. Uh, next, are there any questions about the schedule? So, Craig, I just think it would be at all of these meetings, we want to be clear. What is it that we are going to be asking the committee to do tonight? Fantastic. Very good point. Thank you, Austin. Um, so tonight. You'll be getting two presentations. One will be the those exterior color palette yeah. and the other will be um, a continuation of the discussion about the interior interior and exterior renderings. Yep. So no decision is needed tonight. Rather, right. there'll be two right. decisions. If you feel compelled to decide on yep. either, that is okay. But if uh, if you want to wait till our next meeting, right. March 2nd, those will be the two primary decisions at that meeting. Um, and then the next big right. decision will be the landscape design at the March 16th meeting. Uh, Ellen and Josephine, do I have that correct? Is there anything else that you need from uh, the LBC here tonight or in the upcoming meetings? No, that's correct, Craig. Fantastic. Thank you. Great. So, Craig, before you go on, any questions for Craig about the schedule? Sharon. I just have one question. I know we're going to talk about the renderings, but you do you guys know, once we make those decisions, when we'll be able to have them in hand? Ellen, Josephine. I think we um, usually budget a couple of weeks of time to develop them. Yeah, I want to say three, Josephine, on average. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely two to three. Um, we would focus on the exterior first. Mm -hmm. That would be our approach. Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you, Sharon. Any other questions about the schedule? Okay, Craig. Thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, the next thing, oh, I just wanted to echo what Sean was saying about, yes, we have uh, some meetings coming up to talk about known and potential uh, additional costs that the project is facing. Um, on the temporary location front, uh, just a quick report. Sharon's been doing a great job working with local real estate folks to uh, learn what's available in the market, in the Amherst market, and what might best serve the community's needs while the main Jones Library is out of commission or be under construction. Um, so far, she's rounded up a bunch of information, and uh, we have, and Colliers is compiling that. And we hope to present um, at an upcoming meeting um, sort of where, where that stands and maybe make some recommendations and look to this committee for uh, guidance and direction. So that's coming up soon. Great. Sean. Um, Wait, Sean. Just a quick question. On the temporary location, that's not that's not our decision ultimately, though, is it? Is that a, that's a library decision? I think it's a library board decision in okay. consultation. The library director will obviously be consulting with you and Paul. Right, but, but it's not this committee's, we're not gonna vote on anything, oh, okay. I don't think so. I mean, I think there, but there may be some budget uh, implications. You know, implications. Okay. But in terms of, I, I, I think the jurisdiction of deciding, do we approve of this location or that location would rest with the trustees. Mm -hmm. Very good, thank you for that clarification. Um, and that concludes uh, my report. Um, I'll like, I would like to turn things over to the design team, and I think the order will go in is that exterior color palette, and then wrap things up with the interior, uh, interior and exterior renderings. Could I just ask one quick question? And if this is going to mess things up, ignore it. Where are we on the conversation about the skylight in the in the building? The remaining skylight. Yeah. Um, so I. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Josephine and Ellen, but I believe this design phase, design development phase is when that new concept is going to take shape. Great. I don't think it has taken shape yet. Great. Um, but yes, by the end, uh, when do we say? Uh, so by the end of April, probably even sooner than that, uh, the design team will have uh, maybe a recommendation or Terrific. a design for you to Great. look at. Great. Thanks so much. Okay. Correct. Ellen? That's correct. No, I said you, you want would... us to kick, kick it off. I'll let. So thanks. Nice to ev see everybody. Uh, you have the packet that was sent out to you yeah. all, and Justine's going to take us through it. Great. Thanks so much. Great. Hi, everyone. Um, so, yes, we are going to run through the package now. As um, Craig mentioned, we'll run through exterior first. Um, and we. Um, kept this front cover here with all the um, existing photos just so we can have something to go back to as we're looking through some of the um, colors and um, materials through the presentation. So all of you probably remember this slide. Um, we're going back to just our colored circles of um, what all the materials are. So we'll run through that first. And we are highlighting um, the main material here as number one, which is the brick. Um, number two, as you can see, um, is our um, material that will um, change um, from the brick. And that is um, was originally metal panel. And we had um, put that as one of the VE items, which we are looking at potentially hardy board at the mo moment. And we'll go through that during the presentation. And, um, and then we have our other major material, which is the roof, um, which is a standing seam metal roof. Um, so just to touch base first on the major material um, of brick here um, selected, this by no means is showing you um, colorways, but it's just giving you an indication of the, um, the material that we chose as the main um, driver. Um, we had looked at some other um, alternatives during the design phase. Um, if you recall, we had looked at um, slate sculpings and we had looked at aeroscraft, but we would like to move forward with brick and all brick um, material for um, the entire edition of the design. 
um, going back to the discussion on the Hardy board material, we had um, presented this to you at some point during one of our design presentations. And um, this is a more affordable approach um, in lieu of a uh, metal panel. Um, we do want to talk a little bit in more depth about Hardy board. And we have a slide um, that we're going to go to next to, um, to, to go into a little more detail about this material. One second, Justine, could you just zoom in on that rendering just so folks can see where the number two is in case they're on a laptop? Oh, um, sure. Can you see that better? It's this, it's this pop out here. It's the pop, yeah, thank you. And we will have other locations where this would be introduced. Um, it's just not as prevalent. Um, it, this would be um, at the, <coughs> above the second floor level where we have um, the elevator headhouse and a bridge connection to the top floor of the original building. Um, and and it's as we mentioned that you won't see it quite um, quite as much. So mm -hmm. this is really the portion, this pop out here that Ellen just mm -hmm. noted where you'd be seeing this. Um, so going on to the next slide, um, I think maybe Craig, you might want to speak to this one a little bit before we get into some of the details on Hardy, Hardy Board, but um, Craig was so kind to lend us this image. <laughs> <laughs> and Certainly. And so so this was a great Hardy Board image. So we thought it was important to show tonight. Yep. Uh, thanks, Josephine. So this was a uh, construction manager's office that I happened to be visiting. Uh, as you can see on the right hand side, there is a historic uh, or historic appearing building on the left hand side is an addition. Uh, the addition was done about 15 years ago. Um, I believe it was a Perkins Eastman project and uh, Consigli is the construction manager who owns this property. Um, on the, that left, that big gray area, that, uh, that facade, that is um, one of these, I don't know if it's Hardy brand Hardy board, but it is one of those um, materials. And you know, from a distance, you can see a couple things. One, uh, it is a panelized system, so you can see all um, the four by eight sheets running both vertically and horizontally. What they did here was pretty clever. It was uh, looks like it was a very efficient use of the materials. Um, you know, there's not a lot of cutting. Um, as you get closer, you can see this image on the right. You can start to see little fasteners, right? So it's an exposed fastener. So from a distance, it could almost, almost pass for maybe a stone panel. But as you get closer, then you realize, okay, this is a um, some kind of composite material. It's got exposed fasteners, which if done nicely can be tidy. Um, but uh, there are obviously some downsides. I think we talked about that in the past. And one of them is the wear, right? So that it's not gonna wear or last as long as uh, say a metal panel, a composite metal panel, and you know, um, Josephine's got the, the hand on the screen is kind of kind of point highlighting where there's been some streaking in this particular case. Mm -hmm. You know, not not terrible, but not great. Um, so when I saw this building, I immediately thought about our project here, the Jones Library, and said, "Hey, this would be a nice kind of quick case study. Just a couple quick pictures." to show you uh, what is uh, one potential outcome. Thank you, Craig. You're welcome. Could, could just, Sean, before you get in, I just want to actually ask a question which was explained, uh, but it'd be good to refresh at least my recollection. Hardy board is made of what? A good question. <laughs> that, that is a great question. So I do not know the exact composition of it, but it's what's referred to as a uh, class of material called composite materials. And so oftentimes it's a uh, um, a raw material like um, a cellulose, like wood fibers uh, mixed with some kind of bonding agent, oftentimes uh, a glue or a resin. And their, uh, some of their strengths are they're dimensionally stable. Uh, so unlike a piece of wood, which shrinks and swells, yeah. um, composite materials don't uh, shrink or swell uh, to moisture. They don't, they're, they're uh, dimensionally stable with, with temperature. Um, usually they're easy to cut. Uh, usually they're very consistent quality. Look, uh, if I was to, I'm uh, sorry, look, that isn't, if I was to touch it, mm -hmm. does it feel 
What does it feel like? And if it you tell prompt... me Hardy board, that's not going to help. <laughs> <laughs> so this, yeah. So this, uh, this particular uh, brand or or model, yeah. has a little bit of tooth to it or texture to it. Yeah. So if you had your eyes closed and you put your hand against it, uh, are you familiar with uh, Homosote? It's like a, a a paper product that's pressed into board uh, form. Uh, oftentimes, tack walls are made out of that. So that's what it would feel like. It would feel like kind of paper, like a blend between paper, wood. Um, it's probably the best description of it. There's a little texture. It's not perfectly smooth. Okay. Um, it's the type of thing that if you are, um, if you took a hammer to it, you could probably put a hole through it. Um, yes. Easily. Yeah. And actually, just the technical, it's made of cement, sand, and cellulose fibers. And if there was to be, uh, like a big hail storm would the hail big enough cause kind of pox on the hardy board I not that i'm not. aware of okay no. okay all right actually, I saw metal panels is that's actually sort of a, a risk with metal panels is that you get those little dents yeah uh, i've got sean and then christine sean Thanks, Austin. Uh, so uh, just a couple of questions. Um, Craig, just to be clear, is the, the objective of this visual is sort of that aesthetically it doesn't look great when you have a big sh a bunch of it all together. Is that sort of what the <laughs> objective the was? I just want to make sure I'm interpreting your comments correctly. Um, so I was presenting this with no um, ulterior motive. Just here's an example of a building I came across here in Massachusetts that has this treatment. Um, I, I would tend to agree with you that a whole lot of okay. it uninterrupted is a, um, is a look, but not necessarily what uh, the library is going for. But I think in, in the design, Feingold Alexander has, has produced most of your facade is going to be brick. And then you have a high, you know, some areas that would be this material, certainly more limited uh, than what we're looking at here. And that was just my second follow up question is um, in the presentation, Josephine, that you're presenting, I see the the section around the windows. Um, are there any other sections that are that large um, or uninterrupted where we might get a uh, the effect that we see on the screen now? We have um, the other area that it, that you'll find it is in our um, bridge connection um, where the elevator meets the um, staff area on the top floor of the existing building. So in the in your presentation, it's, this is number two, right? This is what shows up as number two? Yes. Yes, and you can't see that in that rendering, that okay. rendering. Um, there are parts of it that you will see from um, within the space of the second floor um, because you can look up and see the bridge. Um, <laughs> there will be spots that you can see it from the front, very small area. Um, we showed an exterior rendering um, image last week of that spot, actually, where you would see it from the other side of Amity Street. Mm -hmm. okay. um, those are the areas where you would um, potentially see this from. And I guess just one last question. So the, um, you, Craig, you spoke about the texture. Is that sort of the standard texture for this type of material? There's no like polished version or shinier version that might... Um, Maybe be look more like the photo. Uh, that seems more like a shinier finish around the windows. Uh, that's a great question, Sean. Um, there may be. I, I just don't. I'm not. Okay. We can look into that, Sean. There might. It won't be shiny. It'll be more. It will be flatter, maybe. Mm -hmm. Right. But we also were going to reach out to the Hardy product rep to ask him why this is doing that. Um. Right. Is it some, it, it's hard to figure, you know, the rhythm of it. I don't know if it's streaking down from the roof, but we thought it was worth the conversation just to see what they say about it. Okay. Thank you. And before Christine gets in, Craig, do you have any idea how old that building, the, the new part of the building is? How long that Hardy board has been there? Yes, it was, the project was completed 15 years ago, approximately 15 years ago. Okay. Thank you so much. Christine. Yeah, thanks. I have a couple of things. So um, one, I was wondering the same thing, if if that's actually the Hardy boy board being stained or it's just like runoff from the roof and whatever, you know, it's dragging black, either dirt or paint or something from, from the roof. Um, and that's something to keep in mind 
on ours, it looks to be like a white or a light color. So it would show yeah. up, leave dirt or whatever. Um, and whatever we're picking for our roof to make sure that the black doesn't run off. Um, and it's, can't you paint hardy board? I mean, you don't want to, but if 15 or 20 years goes by and it's looking dingy, it's my understanding that you can paint it. Yes, I believe that is true. Thanks. Thank you, Christine. Okay, back to you, Josephine. Great, thank you. So moving on to the next slide. Um, we're at number five, which is the um, roof material. Um, this hasn't changed from previous um, presentations. It's um, standing seam roof and we're moving forward with that. And we um, just have some images here with um, dormer pop-outs too, just because it sort of speaks to what we are doing along the um, the west facade with our dormers. Mm -hmm. And now we'll get into the color palette. And okay. so we are going to show two um, ways that we can go with the color. Um, we sort of want to um, not, we want to be quiet with the new with the addition and let the existing building speak. Um, so we're um, looking at more solid tones for the brick, but we're gonna show you two palettes and one is a cooler gray palette. Um, and these are by no means indicating brick patterns or anything else um, on the slide. It's just really showing you a cooler gray and what that would mean. Um, we, I think we had mentioned in the past that we will, we are going towards a, um, a different size brick, which it's called a Norman brick, and it's a longer, um, thinner brick. Um, and we may change the pattern, and that's of course going to be happening as we're developing the drawings. Um, but that's what we're still looking into. But um, for for this conversation, um, we're really focusing in uh, on the color for for to get some feedback from from all of you. So. Um, we're going to take you to the warm gray next, which has more earthy, earthy tones. And the original building really has a mix of different colors. Um, there's grays and browns, and um, it it lends itself to to going in a couple of different directions, really, um, with the addition. Um, I don't know, Ellen, if you have anything to add to that, but um, but this is the warm gray palette that you're seeing right now. Right. And I think just the more we're looking at, you know, studying the existing exterior, it is, there is quite a bit of color in the existing building and that, and that's why we're heading towards this, these two gray palettes, either a warm or a, a cool. Um, we think it's the, there's a fair amount of gray in it, in the existing um, building in different uh, values. So before Christine gets in, the, this slide, what you've called warm gray, the eye, my eye suggests that that's brown. That, can I say one thing? That's a really good point, Austin. One of the challenges of this remote is yeah. everybody's screen reads slightly different. Yeah. yeah. And as we we will ma be making a trip out to Amherst, so we can actually once we kind of hone in on a um, color palette, yeah. we will bring all the samples to you so you can see in person. Because okay. of that, th th it, it's a it's a it's an issue. Okay, so what looks to me to be brown may not be brown at all. No, it's a little more creamy beigey than the cool. Okay. Okay, Christine. Um, yeah, so um, with the cool and the warm, if, uh, Josephine, do you mind rolling back up to the first um, drawings you gave? So looking at our existing building with new eyes, and I know photo, uh, I mean all the way up to actually the Jones Library. Yeah, so again, it could be the photos or my screen, but, you know, looking at that, it looks so warm 
to me rather than cool right from the get-go. And as Ellen said, there are a lot of colors in there. Yeah. And some of that brown you're talking about. Yeah. Um, so I was just wondering, then if you roll down to the next slide, Josephine, where you had a rendering, that seems to me a little bit more of a cool gray. And then I don't know, I guess we can only have one screen up at a time, but in a way now looking at this, I go, oh, this doesn't actually go as well maybe with the front because it is too cool. But, but you know, I don't know. What are you guys thinking on that? So Just, oh, sorry. I, sure, I can speak first. I think everyone's eyes are different. So Ellen, you can you can totally <laughs> totally disagree with me. But um, to me, this was a little bit warmer um, because um, I see some tans and beiges and a little bit of brown in the gray. Um, but again, it could be the computers. <laughs> right. um, it certainly could because um, it doesn't take too much actually to, to cross that line. Sometimes it's it's sort of the colors that are within the grays can really range. And oh um, yeah, yep. And, and I think on the roof here, Christine, I would agree it's kind of cool on the roof. Yeah, you know. Um, but it and again, the way this rendering showing the the side that you see the sun on. Right. It's definitely warmer than the no sun side. So that that's real really reality, right? So it's gonna feel a little different depending on the time of day. So if we just roll back up to our existing lovely library. So you know, is this looking warmer than it really is because of the photo or I think it's warm. I mean, you you guys see it every day. I mean mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it just the tones it feels warm but i don't know what do you what's the rest think i mean yeah so christine are you also okay thank you christine sean and then sharon so i tend to like the the color scheme on the back and the, the next slide if you go down one i think that looks nice with the sort of the contrast in the brick so it's not just a solid brick i think that goes well and goes well with the, the current library, uh, the front. And if you go down back to the warm brick section real quick, the one that had the different options, to me, like these look like they're not all the same. Um, so the, the one that looks closest to me is the first one that looks like that's most consistent with the, the rendering that you already have um, on the left that has some darker colors that kind of pop out from the lighter background. The other two seem very sort of flat so I would sort of lean towards that first one because I think it is closest to the rendering that you've done already, which I like. The first one, Sean, being the this image that I see as, as I see as brown. Yeah, that okay, well, that great. definitely has brown highlights. Yeah, yeah. In it. yeah. I yeah. just want to make sure I understood. Okay, thank you, Sean. Sharon. Yeah, so um, I do get to go into the Jones Library every single day, and uh, so to me, it reads as cool um uh but i but i don't think that matters and i tend to prefer cool colors i like the cool gray palette but honestly i'm i'm actually most interested to hear what the architects what you guys think um you know you guys have seen the building plenty of times and uh i i'd like to go with your gut thank you um so I would make the observation, if you go back to the rear of the building, that is the northern, um, the northern western side of the building that we're seeing. So that's going to be in shade all the time. So we're not going to see sunlight on it. So I, I worry about the grayer, cooler bricks there. And I think the, the Austin Brown look is what I would lean towards with the variability and that it sort of more approximates what's on the front of the building. Um, and I would just be, con <clears throat> excuse me, conscious that this part of the building that we're looking at is really going to not see the sun for the most part, except on, uh, you know, at the end of the day. Thank you, Paul. Um, Alex, do you want to, you want to weigh in at this point about cool, warm? Um, so could you go to the cool, color palette choices um, Yeah, so I think I'm somewhat 
uh, feeling what Sean commented on. I mean, <clears throat> you know, when you're doing this online and absent touching real materials and looking at real materials against the uh, existing building, you know, I'm sort of left with other building options that you presented us with. And of the ones you presented, I also like the warm color left brick variation. But again, that's not really about palette, I think, as much as the pictures you've chosen. So I'm, I, I think I lean toward warmer colors, opposite of Sharon, sorry, Sharon. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, again, I just, I have a really hard time on a flat screen knowing mm -hmm. what my screen might look like compared to what these pictures really look like mm -hmm. uh, weighing in much. Okay. Uh, Paul, is this a new? It, just a quick, I, I assume sure. that you're going to bring out Rick samples at some point and put them up against the building. I mean, it's, I think we can't really make a decision with on these yes. renderings. Yep, we would definitely do them, Paul. And I, I, I think we were just looking for a general, we're heading towards the cools, we're heading towards the warms, just, and okay. we will, we'll bring out a couple of samples of, you know, all of the material. And we'll see that before things need to be finalized, right? Correct. Okay. Yes. All right, Christine. Um, yeah, I think I, I think I lean towards the warms, but seeing in real light would be uh, definitive. But um, so Sean brought up like on the rendering, it, it's bricks of different colors, mm -hmm. you know, different shades. And did you all early architect FAA say you were looking towards a solid brick? Because of the multi of the front. Uh, go ahead, Josephine. You, you did mention that. Right. We've, we've, we've talked about this in the office a few times. Right. Yeah. I mean, internally, we've discussed having more of a solid um, feel just to not um, take away from the original building. And, you know, not that we're trying to draw a line, but having that differentiation from the original um, which is usually an important factor in an addition. Mm -hmm. um, we thought that that would be a nice, um, a nice um, touch, but we also aren't drawing the line where it's all going to be one color. We have, um, you know, a stone band that's running around the first floor. And at that point, we probably will break the base and change the color um, and or the brick patterning. Um, so um, even though we will, we are looking at something more solid, we still will probably have two colors. Right, and when you say, when we, when we say solid, it's not that they're all, there's less variation in the brick, Christine. So Josephine, right. would you mind going back to the, the existing Jones? This one? No, the, 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 from Amity Street, that, so, and if you really look at this from the side, you know, where the stone, there's a lot of color in there. Yep. And we just want to be careful that what we're doing is not competing with that lot of color. Yep. Um, so uh, again, we'll, we'll bring you out. The next step is to actually get samples. And before we do any final selection, we'll have, you know, we can get, Josephine, how big is that sample for that other project you're doing? It's like four by three yeah. by I think, Five. I think it's three by, she had mentioned three by three, but it might be a slightly larger than that. Right. So we'll have big samples that you guys can look at. We'll have the mortar in it so that, that you can see the mm -hmm. different colors. So this is just the beginning of the, of the se selecting the final. There's, there's a number of stages. Yeah. Okay. And that board that Ellen just mentioned, will show you some of the variation in that brick that we mm -hmm. choose because there's always variation in the, in the brick. And just yeah. to bring up at that time, I was also thinking mortar, you know, if you go to tile in your bathroom, right? Oh, yep. you know, yep. white, gray, and that adds to more colors. Um, but I, like Sharon said, I, I would default a lot to, to you all, the architects in trying to find that balance between making it look interesting, but not too busy, which I think that's what you are experts at. Thanks. Well, I don't want to dissent from deferring, but but it, but I do want to say that, um, the, uh, Alan, you persuaded me, right? I, what I'm seeing is very busy color-wise. And the left warm palette one 
feels to me very busy color wise. And um, like you, I worry if you were to choose a brick pattern that's as busy color wise as the the existing library, that would not be great. Um, and while I generally don't like a stark contrast in things, I'm I'm persuaded at least initially, tentatively, that we we don't want to replicate busyness. And that something that is less busy than this is going to stand us in good stead, as opposed to we're looking at two different very busy patterns of 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 uh, a brick and slate. Sean, and not going against what I said earlier, but to Austin's point, maybe this is part of the rendering discussion. Is it possible to get a view where the brick meets the existing building? Because right. the view we have from the back, all you see yeah. is the new stuff, and I think it looks yeah. really nice. But I think to really kind of get a sense of yeah. how busy, you know, how it co um, comes together would be to see that front sort of corner view where they meet. Because um, I think that might change my opinion. Yeah, if, if it if it kind of is too busy with the brick that I could see, or the existing stone that I could see not going that direction. Great. Craig, are you going to help us? Uh, maybe. Uh, what I, I wanted to point out is there is some existing red brick on the existing building, which will remain. And so I think, at least I think it will remain. Uh, so it may be that the new brick doesn't actually touch any of the old stone. Uh -huh. It doesn't, Craig, but they're close, right? If okay. if you're looking from Amityville to the side, from Amity, uh, Amityville, Amity Street. Amityville. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, you see the you see the the gambrel end yeah. of with the stone, and you you will see this. So we can we can produce Great. that. I don't know, Sean, if what, it'll be a rendering. We can put some color on one of the elevations to help kind of give you a sense of of what that is. So Ellen and Josephine, so far have we helped you? I think you have. Um... <laughs> we are giving you a couple of weeks to think it over, uh, but it's it's definitely sounding like um, you're trusting our um, better judgment when it comes to to the brick samples that we should um, potentially um, bring to the site and present to you all. Yeah, I want to be clear. This is Amherst. We're trusting you until we don't. <laughs> Alex. <laughs> Do we know by chance if of the myriad of buildings between the college campuses that if there are any buildings that we could look at that say have the Norman brick or that are a cool palette or a warm palette yeah. just to give something actually to look at rather than on a screen? Great. I don't know about the Norman brick. That's a good question. So just for your own sake, your uh, regular brick is about um, two and a quarter inches high by about eight inches long. A Norman brick is about two and a quarter inches high by 12 inches long. So it's the same vertical height, but they're longer. And there, it's just, it's a slightly different look than um, than the, you know, the, your standard brick. I don't know, I, we can do some checking, see if we can figure that out. And one question, I just, uh, I think I know the answer to this. Uh, does any of this, putting aside the Hardy Board conversation, uh, affect the cost of the project? Cool, warm, and, and no. it's all going to be roughly the all same price. Same yeah. price. Right. Great. The colors will not affect. Great. If and we're because what we're staying is in their standard line of selections with brick. There's it just in our office we probably have thirty six different colors to choose from. So mm -hmm. it's it's limitless essentially in brick, and that's all you know uh, standard colors. Okay, and then based in your experience over time, one or another of these patterns, color patterns stand up better or it's brick they stand up equally the, the same way doesn't matter whether it's cool or warm doesn't matter okay. brick is brick brick is brick christine um yeah back to the hardy board and i'm good with hardy board 
but I know we were kind of swapping that out for metal. Um, I don't remember how much of a savings because there's not that much being used. Is it really that great of a savings? And is it money why we're switching to Hardy Board? Uh, the cost estimator is pegged it at $150,000 okay. to swap out half of the Aris craft, the, the metal, with a lower end material, more cost effective material. So it is a good chunk of change. That is. Thank you. Okay, back to you, Josephine. Oh, excuse me, Alex. One more quick question. So um, while we're, you know, deferring to you as architects in theory, um, I guess I have just one add on to that and is that obviously our building is downtown in the context of, you know, the strong house on one side and the old bank on the other and Amher Cinnamon. So I don't know, even though the front of the building is facing, you know, the existing is facing a lot of that, I guess, just in the context of the other buildings that are surrounding us. I don't know if one pallet lends itself um, to the to the surrounding buildings, but just a thought. Great. Okay, back to you, Josephine. Thank you. Um, so that brings, I think, to the end of the colors. And we can move, if no one has any further questions, we can move on to the renderings. Okay, just to be clear, are we all good so far on the color palettes, ready to go to renderings? Okay, thank you. Um, so we have eight renderings that we're going to review with you tonight, all of which we um, have reviewed last week, but we sort of consolidated down to um, the eight that we think from what you heard and from what um, we have looked at um, are probably the most um, effective. Um, so we have three at the exterior that um, I think these were all approved last week. Moving on to the first floor, um, we have three at level one. We um, still have the view in the children's area. Um, we did talk about potentially shifting this and that could still happen um, down the road, but one will still remain in the children's wing. Um, we have one in the main lobby um, circ desk area, looking back at the original building. And then we have the one in the um, double vaulted um, adult fiction space. And then moving to the second floor, we are showing two on level two. Um, one is the redo of the view we've been looking at for several years now, looking at the main space. And then we have one in the reading room um, in the original building. So in total, these um, are the eight renderings that we are proposing. And um, as Craig mentioned, we will leave this to you to review and um, internally and decide if these are if you're all okay with these moving forward with these eight. Great, Sharon. Oh, I don't know if Craig should talk. First, Craig, is is what you have to say more important than what I have to say? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I doubt it. Okay, then, then I'll go first. Um, my first question, Josephine, is does the order that you just presented that in, by order of your priority, uh, or should we give you our order of priority for negotiations in case something needs to get dropped off due to cost? So, Craig, do you want to talk about cost before we... Sure. Just okay, wait, the, before the you go, preference. Craig, uh, yep. hang on. So then my only other question has to do with, love these eight choices. Um, could you not find anything on the garden level that would be compelling? You like all of these others better. Thank you. Uh, when, when it comes to cost, um, I think Tony had mentioned last time uh, the possibility of 
a, a lower cost for some of the ones that were, you know, a reuse of a similar view or the same view. And that has panned out. And so the design team has advised that for these eight, it would be a $13,000 um, additional service, which is um, a savings over, you know, the eight times 2000, which would be 16,000. So that I think is much appreciated. Um, and just as a reminder, we do have a line item for uh, miscellaneous cost. This would be a, an appropriate use of that money, in my opinion, uh, of 11,000. So pretty close. So I, I just want to say something, and I defer to Sharon on this. Uh, we are going to face a lot of, we are already facing a lot of things where we're adding cost to the project. Uh, you know, little nibble here, money for this, money for that. And I don't know, Sharon, I, I really do think that um, we don't want to spend more than we really, really need to spend um, on on renderings, uh, which are not going to make the building more energy efficient, not going to make the building stand up, you know, whatever. So I just, I mean, I know that there are things that we want and we think that they'll be useful, you know, but have you really kind of looked at this from the perspective of we, we're going to spend $13,000 that maybe we could save some of that money? Oh, if the uh, so I thought we had, what am I trying to say? Uh, I don't want to spend additional money. So I thought these eight were going to fit into the bucket of money we already had for this. I think uh, if all eight renderings, if, if this is an, a completely additional 13,000, um, I think we need renderings for uh, the capital campaign yeah. committee. So I think we're going to have to spend some extra, but if we need to get back down to 11,000, if that means eliminating one of the renderings, then I'm happy to do that. Well, I'm just raising this question again, if we save money on renderings, we can use it elsewhere. And maybe that's the wrong way to think about it. And I don't want to go cheap on renderings if it's going to, because it will, will have an impact in terms of fundraising and the rest. But um, I just want to raise this general question. And it's a general question, which is a little more here and a little more there. And as we faced a little more here and a little more there, I think it'd be good to kind of keep in mind that uh, we don't want to do a little more here and a little more there unless it's absolutely necessary. And that would be kind of my standard. Like, is this absolutely necessary? Yes, we need renderings. But Ellen's going to help me. One thing I wanted to say, Austin, is that if we, if you feel as though you'd like to reduce the number, we can always do more renderings in two months. Yeah. This is not this is not like now or yeah. never. Yeah. Right. So if the fundraising guys are saying, oh, somebody really wants to see a rendering of this and they're going to give us a ton of money, we can get that done. So it's not, you know, there's flexibility in that. Great. 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 Christine. Your mute. Yeah. Greg, can you re uh, remind me how many were built into the the estimate like uh, <clears throat> the uh so there there are none that are owned in the base in the design team's base contract but they included um two thousand dollars per rendering as a as a unit cost and then what they were able to realize is um a slight reduction or actually 50 percent uh for the renderings that use the same view so if you were to take away, say, number seven yeah. at this point, you would reduce the cost, I presume, by $1,000. Right. If yeah. you were to take away number eight, you would reduce yeah. the cost by $2,000. Yeah. And Ellen, just can correct me if I've got that wrong. That's correct. And just my follow-up was, I assume Sharon was talking to the fundraising crew. Was there a final list that they wanted, like they wanted these five or what was that? Yeah, thank you for asking. So um, in their priority, uh, the, the last two in their priority list was your number four, Josephine, on the first floor 
uh, looking towards Amity Street. Yeah, uh, so that was their eighth in their order of priority list. And their seventh is your six of, of the barrel vaulted right. ceiling, um, which is kind of interesting because what they really wanted uh, was your number five, but looking from uh, the Northwest corner, you know, you had, you had talked about that. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I would... I would keep the barrel barrel vaulted ceiling one, your number six, but get rid of your number four and your number five and only bring back the your number five if you can make it later on down the line, somehow combine the new with the old. Did any of that make sense? So I guess right now what I'm suggesting is you get rid of your five and your four on that level. That's fine. We're, you know what, we're going to do a four because we need it as a rendering. So we're going <laughs> to okay. do it and you can use it. We, we think it's, we, we, every library we do, people want to see the lobby. Okay. So if you guys can't do it, we're going to want it for our marketing. So we'll, we'll do it. There we go. We just save money. <laughs> yes. I, I think we're fine helping out that way. Um, because I think it's going to be important for us to design it. Right. Great. And um, for your, we think your fundraising is going to need it. So we will put in our two cents. So are we to the point where we are now kind of agreed that four and five are going to go away, four is going to be brought back by FAA? Sharon, are you good with that? Yeah, uh, one more question has to do with uh, the ground floor. Not that I'm looking to add one, but do you did you guys feel like you couldn't find one on the ground floor? That Josephine, do you have a first floor, a ground floor plan? It it just um, my opinion is there's not a lot of big open space. Yeah. So it's more more like a vignette. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, I don't have ground open. Okay. But, um, yeah. But I agree, it would be probably more like a vignette, um, showing maybe the lobby space if we were going to add one. That makes sense. So yes, uh, we we capital campaign committee agrees with. So we're down to seven now, with one of them being paid for by Ellen. You rock. <laughs> yes. You. And Craig, what does that do to our budget in terms of what was? The eleven thousand figure. So it sounds like we'll be coming in uh, at nine thousand. Um, so under budget. So there's two thousand left over for either another rendering later on or some other miscellaneous expense. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. All right. Any other questions about the renderings? Okay. So Craig. I think that is it for um, for Colliers and Feingold Alexander. That's fabulous. And I'm going to say again, thank you for the work you're doing. It just, every time, it, it just uh, looks better and better. I'm really, really grateful for the your, your patience and the work that you're doing to help us see and imagine uh, what this fantastic, renovated, and expanded Jones Library will look like. I can't wait to touch the brick. <laughs> what about the Hardy board? <laughs> yeah, right. I'm not I'm not so excited about the Hardy board, but I'll come around. Okay, so subcommittee reports. Madam Chair of the Design Subcommittee. Nothing to report. Thank you. Alex for outreach. Okay, thank you. No correspondence that I have received, nothing that I know of that hasn't been anticipated. So now we have public comment. We have six folks in the audience, attendees. Thank you all for coming and for your interest. Bob Pam would like to be recognized. Bob. Bob. Bob, I'm not hearing you. Bob. <laughs> Bob. 
Bob, could you put something in the chat if if you you know we can't we can't hear you. I'm trying to move him over to the panelist room to see if that helps. Great, thank you. There he is. Unmute yourself. That's fabulous. It's very nice to see you. Can't hear you, Bob. Can't hear you. Thank you, Bob. So Bob you might will... want to get off and get back on. See that he put something in the chat. So while Bob Good is idea. Bob is doing that, any other member of the public wish to be recognized? Okay. Bob, are you chatting us? <laughs> that is completely fabulous. Completely fabulous. Remember, we only have time for a novella, not a novel, Bob. <laughs> so... Austin, I'm not seeing anything in the chat. And... Well, he's typing right now. Okay. I think it looks like he's typing. He's so, so he hasn't he hasn't hit enter yet. Maybe you could send it along in pieces, Bob, so we can start diving in. Bob, you got to give us something. <laughs> oh, you, 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 you got to give us something. Or else you can wait to the next meeting. No, can't wait till the next meeting. <laughs> Ellen and Josephine are going to get stuck in traffic in Boston. Both home, so we don't get stuck in traffic. Ellen, that didn't help. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Maybe you could just write it and hold the paper up. Bob? <laughs> if I can read lips, I think he was saying the committee was doing a fabulous job and he thanks everybody <laughs> for their time and just get home early tonight and safely. Yeah. And don't forget that he volunteers to take minutes at the next meeting. <laughs> Bob, I, I am going to say that you, you really need to put something in the chat. Anyone reading that? Did I try? You, you tried? Here we go. Oh, Lord. oh, oh my God. Well, let me pin him. Lighter roof color. Lighter roof Cost color. Cost estimate at design development. There were question marks after those things. Craig. Uh, so for the design development, yes, there will be a, a full cost estimate um, at the end of the design development phase, which will be April. Um, right. I think the cost estimate will be available at the end of May. Thank you. And uh, whoop, there's more. Oh. How long does Hardy Board live? Long time. I'm hoping, so Ellen had mentioned the design team is going to reach out to the Hardy Great. Boy material rep, and then hopefully that's some information they can provide. Great. The, the one point of uh, data we have is the, the, the Consigli building, which is 15 years old. Yeah. Looks 15 years old, but still weather type, okay. I presume. Okay. There you go. <laughs> God, I, may I just say for the record, I love Bob Pam. Thank you, Bob. All right. So no other public comment. I think we can uh, we can we can we can adjourn and let Bob go back to his coloring. <laughs> see see you soon. Thank you.